Okay, I would like to thank uh, each cop and UNESCO APIA for office for this very interesting activity on the webinar on maritime living heritage. I would like to welcome the online audience in this presentation entitled Strengthening Women Fisher Folk Empowerment Towards Social Inclusion in Coastal Environment of Malolos, Bulacan, Philippines. Women in the Philippine fisheries are often labeled as the invisible fisher folk. Their pre-harvesting contributions are multifaceted, involving bait gathering, net fixing, and meal preparations for their husband, while post-harvesting activities include bringing the fish to the shore, sorting, and cleaning of the daily catch. Women are normally associated with household chores. They are rarely admitted as an essential factor in pursuing their livelihood in the coastal communities. In most cases, Women's participation in fishing communities is neither socially recognized or economically compensated. The primary goal for the development of women in the fisheries is to empower them, make them productive and self-sufficient. In this way, they can have an equal status as partners in promoting the living conditions of their own families and communities. For the literature review, empowerment is all about people taking control of their lives, setting their own agenda, gaining skills, building self-confidence, solving problems, and developing self-reliance. The study acknowledges the importance of empowering women fisher folk to carry on with their role in enhancing food security. Social inclusion is an undertaking of enhancing the participation in society, specifically to those who are less advantaged through building opportunities chance to use resources, having means to be heard and respect to everyone's rights, giving women a chance to be heard in the coastal communities and considering their welfare in policy making and project formulations will help them surpass all the challenges that may come their way and will promote their inclusion in the fishing industry. The purpose of the study is to describe the overall portrait of the women fisher folk based on their profile, characters, experiences, activities, and values. This study also explores different challenges in strengthening women empowerment that affect social inclusion in the coastal environment. The research design is an ethnographic study of women fisher folk as they go through their activities and their lives in the fisheries. It is a qualitative design where values, behaviors, belief, language, and learned patterns are being recounted and explicated. For the methodology, triangulation through participant observation, one-on-one -on -one interviews, and focus group discussion are employed as ethnographic methods in the study. Participant observation is utilized to observe their fishing community, their fishing-related activities, their verbal and nonverbal communications, and their community as a whole. Face-to-face -face interview involves 33 women fisher folks who are 18 years old and above, actively engaged in fishing-related activities for not less than three years, and has been living in one of the coastal communities for not less than five years. Focus group discussion focused on the experiences of eight women fisher folk chosen based on the scores of the empowerment evaluation. The study site. The study was conducted in the five coastal barangays in the city of Malolos, Bulacan, namely Babatnin, Kaliligawan, Masile, Namayan, and Pamarawan, respectively. The portrait of the experiences of women fisher folk, their characters, activities, beliefs, and values. Caregiver, namamailis daan or aquaculture worker. They work as caretakers or operators of palais daan or fish ponds owned or tenanted by landlords. They're normally called as bantay who are in charge of setting, feeding, monitoring, and guarding the ponds in two, three to four cycles a year. They're also in charge in pond preparations like in cleaning, draining, drying, and filling of water. They take part in simple bookkeeping and in providing cooked food during the long hours of harvesting. Risk taker, the gugulaman or seaweed gatherers. They provide a jelly-like substance extracted from red algae known as the gulaman dagat a cooking substitute for gelatin, a clarifying agent for soda drinks, and an agent mix for making pails. The risk-taking activity starts at around 5 in the morning as they paddle their way to the sea using a canoe type of boat 
then cook would carefully gather the seaweeds by scooping them inside the boat using their bare hands or bamboo sticks. Collected seaweeds will be hanged in clotheslines for faster drying. Then it will be brought to the local market or to the plastic traders at 25 pesos per kilo. They usually collect 10 to 20 kilos for the span of 15 days. The most difficult part is the fact that they cannot afford to buy their own banca that they have to pay a rent of 30 pesos per day in order for them to proceed with the day's work. The mana na laba or the oyster pickers. Women engaged in talaba or oyster speaking begin their work at 12 noon. They would paddle their way to the stakes for about 30 minutes, usually all alone by themselves. When they arrive at the area, they will submerge to waste high water after leaving their boats at a secured place, carrying with them a hammer, a personally crafted belt bag, and a screwdriver, they will proceed to collect their day's produce. After gathering, they will return to their homes to clean and shock the talaba. The danger of the manalaba includes the threat of drowning during the times when the waters are very high. The namamaklad or the actual fisher folks. Namamaklad is when women go out regularly on bankas, taking the risk with their husbands to fish. Their activity starts at as early as 10 in the evening. They would sail to the open sea toward their fish corals, exposing themselves to unstable weather conditions with only the stars and the moon as their working companions. The strong winds that cause the rough seas during the habagat season make fishing a life-threatening activity. The namamaklad is supposed to have a strong body and patience in order to withstand the tedious requirement of sorting the catch for the night. There are no restrictions for this activity since they still practice even during the eighth month of their pregnancy and would usually resume on the fourth month after giving birth. It is not unusual to see them tugging along with them, their newly born, just to give them the needed care and sustenance. The influencer, bakulera or fish wholesalers. Bakulera is a term used to call a female fish trader who independently positions herself at the forefront of the fish trading business. The bakulera is often considered as a big time trader in the island who has the capacity to earn as much as 10,000 to 20,000 worth of gross income as the trading day closes. The bakulera's day starts at 3 a.m. by heading towards to the main ports to check the availability of the possible trading goods. Their bankas are loaded with banyeras or pails of distinct color and emblem exclusive to them. They are responsible for negotiating the prices of their catch to the consignation or the big time middleman. They influence the prices of their fish commodities since they take hold the biggest supply of sea products that will be distributed to the different marketplaces to the numerous fish vendors. Strategies, Tindera or the fish vendors or the tindera is a peddler who sells fish either to their own community or in the far barangays. Their activity starts at around 3 a.m., waiting normally in the ports for the motorboats to arrive. With their pails and bamboo or plastic baskets, they would try to secure their daily ranging from 5 to 20 kilos. They would then hurriedly go aboard the banca to proceed to the town or the barangay main roads. As they arrive at their designated areas, they would get to their pedicab or a bicycle with an attached side carriage, arrange all their fishes, and start the regular route of seven kilometers long. They would usually scream their common chant to inform their suki that they're already in the area. They make use of the cell phones in order for their buyers to place orders ahead of time, informing them of the available products. They provide special services such as cleaning the fishes and errands, bringing vegetables for them. The preservers, the mag aasim or the salt makers. Salt farming is making a living through the salt salt production. The task of the salt makers starts from the preparation of the salt beds, condenser pans, brine pop setup, brine water passage, and they would then proceed their actual salt melting process and finally harvesting. They have to wait for the sun heated hours of the day to harvest. The magbabaguong or the shrimp paste makers. Baguong or shrimp paste is a common ingredient in most foods, which is made from alamang or the fermented krill. The magbabaguong day starts with pamamakyaw or wholesale buying of the krill 
at 4 to 5 a.m. Small timers buy five pails of kilos of krill, then they would proceed to the houses to watch the krill and put seven kilos of salt per pail to ferment them for one week inside the big tapayan or the big old clay jar. Then they were, are responsible enough to make sure that their hands are clean as they mix the solution using their bare hands, avoiding spoilage of the fermented krill. The magtutuyo or the salted fish makers. Since fish is highly perishable, they are offered in its process state for prolonged shelf life through smoking or sun drying. The processing of fishes is ideal to coastal areas that are not equipped with refrigeration facilities or cold storage that could maintain the freshness of the daily catch. It is believed that processing can also improve the flavor of the fish. The absence of the kilns in most of the houses and the unavailability of food as fuel make smoking less favorable among women fisherfolk. The challenges in strengthening women empowerment, hazards due to weather. Global warming re results in increased change in the weather systems in the country, producing more powerful typhoons and extreme warming of the sea waters that result to the death of the coral reefs and migration of fishes to the cooler waters. The southwest monsoon is quite shortened from eight months to at least four months. This affects fisher folks' potential income aside from the thought of their dependency for their daily food. Pollution problems. These transitions caused by urbanization contribute to the degradation of aquatic resources. Damages related to this manifest in coastal or maritime resources, dependent communities such as inexplicable fish kills, fish production problems, reduction of catch, and abnormalities found in fish species. Financial availability. Cash income from fishing activities are distributed in various expenditures such as food, children's allowances, and other miscellaneous foods that are maintained on a daily basis. Women fisher folk often sacrifice the capital intended for their fishing activities, inhibiting them to continue the fish trade and related ventures. Product preservation. Fish being highly perishable product needs to be well handled and preserved. Immediate processing is required in order to prolong the shelf life of the fishes if they are not immediately delivered to the marketplace. The inability to provide facilities such as cold storage and ice production equipment makes it more difficult for women fisher folk to compete against traders from the mainland. For conclusion, the study eliminates the notion that women are just minimally involved in the fishing industry. The study provides substantial evidentiary narrative that women have a variety of roles in the coastal environment, particularly as salt makers, salted fish makers, fish wholesalers, shrimp paste makers, fish vendors, actual fisher folks, seaweeds gatherers, oyster pickers, and aquaculture workers. This is over and beyond their primary roles as mothers, wives, and daughters to their aging parents. Despite their active participation in assuring food security for the families and the community, the women fisher folk are still denied of proper recognition in the policies drafted for the fishing communities. Those who are sincere in promoting their well-being should be serious in revising and adopting policies that can address the challenges that they have to overcome. Women were observed to be enjoying groups, but they are not encouraged nor guided to form organizations that can allow them to communicate and discuss pertinent issues and problems that could later on be beneficial for them. In building sustainable fishing communities, the fishery stakeholders should accept women fisher folks as ideal partners and collaborators in spawning initiatives for the formation of better fisheries management and development. For the recommendations, the ripple effect model. The model postulates that improved policies regarding women fisher folks can accelerate the process of social inclusion of women fisher folks in the coastal environment. A single drop of change in the lives of the women fisher folk can allow them to make a difference in the coastal communities, which can inspire others to strive and be proud of their chosen livelihood. Being empowered could motivate and facilitate others to try vigorously improving their potentials and serve as enablers to other women fisher folks. Thank you very much.